Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're down here at Haltech with Scotty again. Last episode on the IS200 you guys would have seen, we've uh, done some upgrades. We've changed the drive pulley on the blower. We've uh, also changed our fuel system to a return type fuel system. We've gone E85. And now today is the moment of truth. Any early predictions, Scotty, on what we're gonna do? Um, I think we'll just get it on. We'll tidy up the tune first of all because it's got different injectors, right? Mm -hmm. Different injectors, different pump vacuum referenced uh, fuel pressure regulator. So yep. we'll need to make some adjustments in the computer first. The engine hasn't changed though, right? No, engine long mode is exactly as you see it. All right, so the volumetric efficiency sort of um, modeling in the Haltech ECU won't have changed that much. There will be slight differences in the pulley change to make the different boost pressure. But other than that, I think we'll spend a lot of time remodeling the fuel injectors and the injection system in order to get all of our mixtures back into shape like where they were and then we'll take advantage of the ethanol, we'll put as much timing in it for the boost that it's got and try and make as much power as the thing's gonna make, admittedly, on, on, on this combo. Yeah, cool. Is there any number you're thinking of? Obviously, dyno numbers don't mean everything, but... Um, if we make a good gain from what it did have, like this is, there's obviously, there's a lot of work in this mm. to make that power, which in today's numbers, like, it's not for everybody, yeah. um, but... Everyone's used to like 400 kilowatt yeah. barras now, right? Where it's not really what this thing's about. We want the drivability and we want it to have heaps of torque. Yeah. So I don't know how, how much extra boost, how much extra boost is this pulley gonna make? I'd say we're probably gonna see, they kind of give a bit of a broad window between sort of eight and 12 pound. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's not an exact number. Um, so yeah, we're kind of potentially doubling the boost pressure we had previously. All right, so look, if it made the same sort of gain that it made last time, yeah, so for the amount of 30 effort. 30% type of deal again. Yeah. For the amount of effort, you'd be pretty happy with that. It'd be interesting to see what we come up with. Well, I'm pretty keen to, um, mate, just get it on. This seems like a good job to do, so we'll just get into it and get it done. Let's get laptop in. This car's been running pretty good, except mm. for. Until I mucked around with it, it was going mad. Like, we've done heaps of stuff at Wakefield and drags, and okay. I've had plenty of Ks put on it. <laughs> Short-term trim is pulling 20%, long-term is pulling 10%, but it's still achieving the target. So that means that even though it's so far out, the beauty of this is that with the O2 sensor, you can still drive it and yeah. it's still gonna be really nice. So that's awesome. Yeah, cool. We'll go straight in to remember how these gearboxes work. This is a bit mm. of a... Oh, it already feels 10 times better. <laughs> so down low, it's pulling fuel out. Like, whatever the case, up by. It's putting in 10-ish percent or so. Is that because the vacuum and the reg as well? Pumping. It is pumping out the back something. Fuel. I don't know yet. The coolant temp's cold. Could it be just full of oil, full of um, Oh yeah, it'll be water. Like just condensation. And the back is like, um, can you see in my mirror? Yeah, it does that when it's dead cold sometimes. fuel system now is not constant, it's map referenced. And the size of our fuel injectors now is, how big? 850. And what type of fuel have we got in it? E85 pump. And then let's knock out all of our trims, see where we end up. So now we've changed the size of the injector, we've changed the type of fuel going in, and we've changed that it's now a map reference fuel system. Mm -hmm. And the things now feels pretty nice. Yeah. It's now pulling 20% down low. So now I'm gonna hold it, go back up to about 50 kilowatts or so, mm -hmm. and see what's going on up high. Do the same thing. And then get an idea of how much to scale the injector yeah. to sort of meet, fit or to, to, to meet the narrative that we've, that we've already got. So it's now adding 13%. Yeah, it's adding a mixture of these two together to oh, meet okay. our target. Park at least. Yeah, cool. Now 
we come back to idle, it'll be rich as at idle, probably because the dead times are now too high there. Remembering that the way that the dead times work is at idle, that's a huge amount of the actual total injector opening time. Mm -hmm. Whereas at 50 kilowatts, that's a lot smaller percentage. So that's yeah, the okay. reason why I'm trying to balance 50 kilowatts to get the rough flow rate and idle to get the rough dead time. And then we'll start working from there. We could pull the injectors out and put them through a flow bench and do, Test the, them, man. do all of the shit across all of the pressure sites and all of the voltages. But you can see with O2 correction and the type of car that we've got, we've just done that work in three minutes or something yeah right so we could spend half a day around with the injector to flow bench but <laughs> or you could buy some injectors that come with all that data all that data, you could type yeah. all that in and then once you've typed it all in you could still then go and have to do overall trims on it to get it in the ballpark is that like when you say the data comes with the injectors yeah. is it generally close or um, is it, it yeah it is it gives you a good trend of what the injector is doing um and I typically find that I have to highlight that whole table. So the shapes, I always find are right. Yeah, so the so, shapes are right, but the actual numbers might be a bit out. Yep, and then I'll just bring the whole, all the numbers up and down. So things like injectors are often flow, you know, a thousand cc at 60 psi mm -hmm. base pressure, where no one really runs that, everyone runs 40 psi. Yeah. So they're actually- 880s or, or 900s or Whatever or something the case. There. Likewise, the dead time is done versus battery voltage. Very yeah, rarely okay. is it also done versus pressure differential or pressure across the injector, yeah. which has a massive effect as well. Yeah, okay. So we've just got to take all that into consideration. We'll see how well the tune goes from here to see how, how much, like what work we just did. So the, the hint is 50 kilowatts at load is where we do the size, idle is where we do the dead time, and then we'll massage them both. That's your at home bodginess to just get it done. Does it sound nice at the moment? Yeah, sounds pretty happy. It's definitely a lot louder now with the extractors on it. Oh, oh and we're out of juice. That's it. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> Let me um, go and find a power thing. So now that we've done that, mm -hmm. short term and long term, three or four percent in it. Yeah, man. Things are good. Almost like you've done this before. I've seen a guy do it. Watch, watch the video on the internet. Alright, so the next thing I'm just doing there, I'm not doing all the light load stuff because I want to do the full load stuff and get that in the ballpark because if we've got any problems, I don't want to spend all this time on the light load shit. And then you give it a hit and it goes, ugh, and okay. it rolls oh, over. Hang on. Let's now do a pump, change the fuel pressure, change the injectors. Oh, I'm going to do all the light load stuff again. So, yeah. yes, you need to rough in the light load before you get to the heavy stuff, mm. but don't spend heaps of time on it because you're going to be going back there in a minute anyway. Yeah. But all that just happened there, everything looked all right, except for, we'll just be rich everywhere is all, so not, not a big deal. Yeah, cool. B percentage, minus 10 go. That'll do it. I'm glad it's not too barky or anything, you know, for everybody working above the dyno room. <laughs> one, one. We made more power. 100 kilowatts! Hey! Yay. The first 100 is the hardest, right? <laughs> yep. To get an engine to actually run happily. Oh, yeah. The old supercharger belt slipo. Let's see what just happened. Well, we picked up about three pound of boost. And it picked up 20 kilowatts at the wheels everywhere. And it picked up 80 newton meters everywhere. Not bad for a quick Yeah. Do you reckon the extractors help on this? Or what do you, what do you think is the, what's the reason? Well, it's got, it does have a bigger pulley now as well. So it should just make more boost flat out. But I think those stock manifolds, they're so, they look nice till you look at them. And then it's like, yeah, oh, it's pinched down everywhere, like, where they go three into one, because it's twin, twin three into ones into big cats, and they're all, like, the three into one collector's really tightly pinched. Yeah, right. And so it's like, can... that's obviously going to be, I mean, at 100 kilowatts, it probably wasn't a restriction, but obviously, if you can help that sort of free out earlier, it's definitely not going to hurt. All right, so the power is rolling off. 
by the time we're there at about seven green, give or take. So I reckon that's probably where we'll limit it. So we now look at the mixtures. We'll look at the short-term trim and the long-term trim and see what's going on. And the short-term is adding 2% down low and it's pulling half a percent up high. Like, it does nothing. It's about as close as we're gonna it's get. It's like you got it right. <laughs> it's from putting that effort in in the beginning just to get it and you can see it's actually reflected in the long terms as well so now all I'm going to do is give the long terms a bit of a helping hand and I'll just linearize them all in because they're just spots that I haven't already got to yeah you basically just making it look pretty now yeah make the long terms look pretty because it looks pretty well I shouldn't even say that I'm mapping this wrap roughing this part in and what I was gonna say is it looks pretty it probably is but it's actually not true at all. If it looks pretty, it's probably not right. Right. Because yeah, okay. every other dude on the internet tells me about the humps and bumps and you've got to smooth it out and oh look how rough this map is and all this shit. But that's the reality of it. There, they are, work. there are humps and bumps and there are positions where the cam shaft comes on song and where the intake manifold's got a weird reversion. Mm. Mm. Um, and you are to expect that. So, all I'm doing here is trying to maximise the number of samples that I've got in the long-term learning stuff yeah. to then apply to the base table um, just to give, get it closer to the point. Because the closer you can get the tune, the better the long-term trimming's going to work. Yeah. Because there's less error that it's adjusting against. Yeah, okay. See, obviously you don't want it chasing 20% either way. No, it's spot on, spot on. It with the Haltech settings, it maxes out at 20% for memory? Um, you can or can choose, you so actually you can, change that? You can ch so I do about 20% 20 and 20 in the short term, 20% in the long term. Yep. You can set 50% on the short and 50% on the long. Yeah, wow. And let it rip. So it's a nice, um, it's a sneaky tuning tool to get to the point fast as well. So is that almost like people go, oh, this ECU tunes itself? Like, is that kind of yeah, what they can, mean? Um, for the base fuel map, um, yeah, it really, like, like so you say, when you drove this here, you put a pump and injectors and all that stuff in it and turn it drives like it goes all right. Yeah. And yeah, it went well because the computer was adjusting 25% in the background. Yeah. And yeah, you could drive it like that and it'll probably have a tiny bit worse fuel economy, but you probably wouldn't notice or complain about it. Might be like one litre per hundred type of deal. Yeah, yeah so right. not a worry. Um, so, so effectively, I could put an ECU in a car with a base map, and then drive it around and just keep applying the long-term trims. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, wow. Where the trouble But that's playing the long game, right? Man, I set my long-term stuff up pretty aggressively, so it does learn a lot. Yeah, okay. Um, even now, I cheated, because when by the time you got here, you'd idled and cruise this around, so I could already see the shape of what was happening and sort of got an idea of, of, of how the map was going to look anyway. Yeah. So it definitely gives the tuner a real helping hint if you can do that. Um, ignition timing is a bit that's a little bit different because you can't really feel ignition timing on the street yeah, for moving okay. reason. So um, it, don't, it doesn't do any other trimming other than fuel. Well, it, do, it does long-term corrections on anything, basically anything that's closed loop or anything that's got a target. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, um, boost potentially yeah, target boost so if you set 15 pounds mm -hmm. uh, on a turbocharged car or, or something that's got electronic boost control mm -hmm. it'll keep adjusting the duty on that table until it meets the boost pressure that you wanted yeah right uh, idle control so cold you want 1200 rpm hot you want 800 it'll adjust how far open the electronic throttle is or how far open the idle motor is in order to achieve that target yeah okay and then it fills in a table in the background for us so that I can see that, oh, okay, the computer was doing 21% more work than it wanted to at uh, 20 degrees Celsius. So that means that I can go through and sort of rough that table in and I don't need to wait for the car to get to 10 or 20, degrees Celsius again. Because yeah, okay, because you've already got of, that data back yeah, there. It, it's sort of telling me what it needed there. So now that it's got extractors on it, should we put some timing in it? and see if it makes any more or less power. We'll watch how much torque it's making. We'll put some timing in it compared to the last one. I suspect we have a problem. I suspect 
we have a problem. Did you hear the problem about halfway through the Don't run? That tension is cranked to... Is it? Yeah. Uh, anything we can do to try and help? Uh, have a squeeze. Isn't it interesting you put all the time in the world into making something out of billet? A bit of timber will probably sit there for the next year perfectly happily. my friend. Well the belt didn't slip. Definitely did not. No chirping, no anything. Yes. Just pull up early. That bit of timber though. So now let's have a look at what just happened. Did you put more time in that? No. So that was just the same pull with, with no slipping. Yeah. Snazzy. Interestingly now it wants a bit more fuel everywhere which tells me that it also picked up a tiny bit more but not a lot but a tiny bit more boost. On boost from two to five and a half. Okay. Put another bit of timing in this thing. Are you ready? Put, put four in it. Then you go good or bad. Didn't really care for it, did it? Nah, let's just have a look though at the, the torque that it's made. So we'll get rid of everything. The power is one story. Mm -hmm. The torque it's making at the wheels is another story. And the total torque, it picked up not enough to even talk about. Like just it doesn't care for that four degrees. No. So we're kind of tapped out for timing with the old tune more or less. Yeah. It's pretty uh, much what we found before. Or did you put nah, more it's, it's, it's happy to have it wants another two. So we put those two sort of and smooth them across everything. The boost pressure is a little bit interesting. We're on those two runs. Power wise, pretty similar until we get to about here somewhere. Yeah. But on that red run, which was the second last one. Yeah. The boost fell over earlier. So the boost at 5,500, it's got it, but it drops from equal seven and a half to six, it's only one pound. I think it's just slip again. Yeah, but look at the scale. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. So it looks it looks massive, but it's actually one pound. So it's one pound, not not insane, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not super worried about that to be honest. Now that it's got a bit more exhaust flow, mm -hmm. P for percentage. Let's try and advance the intake cam a little bit. See what happens, see if it makes any noticeable difference, then we'll bring it back out. Doing it like a back to back and then a crossover. Yeah. Same as like BCP or no BCP. It's like sort of, yeah. The shape, I don't think the shape's gonna change, but it's worth giving it a shot. And all I do is use a percentage rather than add numbers. Because if I add numbers, I'm putting actual values where I was targeting zero. Yeah. At like the idle and super light cruise areas. difference percentage it's gonna pull a heap out up in the, in the combustion chamber. There is enough power in that. Like that's gone from 310 to 335 newton meters. Yeah. So it's picked up 25 newton meters everywhere till five and a half green. So you cross it over there. So what we're gonna do now, till five and a half green. So up to five and a half here, minus 25. Is that 25 degrees or 25 percent? Uh, that's 25 percent, and that's all I'm using. So that's duty cycle. Um, no, it is an actual target angle. Oh, okay. Uh, the only reason I do it in percentage is because if we do page up and page down on it, I end up putting it numbers with every single number. where I don't want to be. So it's always a better idea to do a percentage change rather than an overall value change. Okay. That's easy to hint. So now 
now let's look at that run compared to the last one. Uh, it's so arguable. Yeah. Oh, and up the top, while we're losing that bit of power there, that's the belt. The belt starts squealing there. Yeah. Admittedly, there's not much in it anyway. It has lost three or four new metres from doing that. Like, it's such a small amount. Just put it on but, it was. but it is an amount, you know, and that's, that's... Like, we're nitpicking, but you put all that work into it to pick up 20 kilowatts of the wheels. Mm. And we're, then we've really got to by nitpicking get all those again. 5%. Yeah, we've got from 120 to 128. Mm. So eight kilowatts doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got 120, mm. it's not. That's not crazy. All right. So now that that's all back in the right spot, the next thing we're going to do, put timing back in it again. Because now that we've done the cam timing, it'll we'll change go, ignition. Timing. We'll go back again and see if it wants ignition timing now. Seems to have wanted that. And just watch, just quick health check, look at the mixtures, make sure everything looks all right. And now at the end of our adventure, we're pulling 3% on the long terms, and the short terms are sitting at zero, and that's what our map ends up looking like. So that tells us that we didn't need to massage the VE map at all because everything was in the ballpark anyway. We needed to massage the fuel. In. Okay, so then the last thing we can do if we're really chasing it to see what's going on, we've got our actual mixture and our target mixture, and we're at a mixture of 12.5. Mm -hmm. So what we can try, humor me, and let's pull our target mixtures up to 13 O's. It's on ethanol, low boost, it'll be all right. We might not leave it here, but we'll at least just see what it does if it's, if it's too fat. If yeah. this makes no power difference at all, we'll put it straight back knowing that you're going to beat the absolute shit out of it. And it'll go forever. Exactly the same. So that, I'll just check to make sure that our change did make a noticeable difference. But that's also a thing, it's a nice thing to know that all we're going to do is hit the around and around in circles. So doing ignition timing, fueling, cam control, ignition timing, fueling, cam control, over and over and over. And our mixtures came up, and no, no noticeable change at all. So I'm not going to, we won't leave that there. It's not worth it. Admittedly, with the power it's making against a six cylinder, two and a half litre, like, it's not under a lot of stress. It'll be able to clear a lot of that heat out of the combustion chamber anyway, so it's not, not a big deal. Well, how would you feel if the number was 129.5 kilowatts? I don't really care if the number was one, if it drives good. It's like the same amount of power, again, from going from ASPO to supercharged. Yeah, 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 I would agree with that. Yeah, well, let's have a look. It's gone from 75 to 130, and we did like an NA run. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. The torque's the big pick up. Oh. So, at five grand. Double. Yeah. 140 to 210 to 320. 7, 8, 90, 120. It's pretty good, eh? Like, yeah. It's not all in our, all out of horsepower machine, but you look at the torque difference. Like that'll be the diff that could potentially be the difference of a gear at Wakefield. Yeah. Like I can I can stay in a different gear now. Yep. I, I would can. completely agree. And now we take it to the drag mile an hour. Really? Yeah. Well, that's all we've done so far. We did NA mile an hour, supercharged mile an hour, and now we'll do like stage two mile an hour before we change the engine. But what to? unless there's things you think need to be changed. I reckon everything feels all right. The last thing I will do to make sure that I was reasonably good with the tune-up on the other parts of it before, uh, 
do some low points. We're going to do a full throttle run, we'll do a 75% throttle run and a 50% run. And if our mixtures stay all beautiful and everything's really nice, we know that we've hit a lot of those points and I feel very comfortable then that our sort of the, our massaging of our new fuel system still suits the VE model that we had before mm -hmm. and that everything will just feel nice on the road. And there is a bit of experience in that, knowing what parts of the map we're going to change. Yeah. And also being that this was your map before, not yeah. some random tune. So it was obviously perfect before. So obviously. there was no need to touch most of that stuff. <laughs> but, but I have been known to have a bit of a bodgy part every now and then on a proper race car. Bit of a glitch. So a full throttle one to start. Race car now. Naughty to muck around. Next one. Got a hot rod. 75% throttle. Let's see if your throttle's oversized. 75% throttle. We've <laughs> made more than flat out before. 50% throttle. Five percent throttle probably won't make it. Like it won't have enough power to actually accelerate. Yeah. We'll go thirty percent maybe. That's 25, 25, 25. Not twenty-five. Not enough to accelerate the rollers. Yeah. But it's not really what I wanted anyway. So interesting that fifty percent throttle is a hundred percent throttle flat out. Yeah. yeah. Like NA. We huh? Yeah. So now I go back through my log to make sure I mix it and make sure everything looks nice, but you can even feel there's no cracking and popping and nothing weird. It just, yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. I know that sometimes this doesn't take as long as we think, you know, sometimes it doesn't take very long, but it's nice. And the only reason it doesn't take long is because you've done a good job getting the right fuel system into it and just making it work. Thank you. I'm gonna roll the dice and we'll just zing her up one more time. Ready? 132. Sounds good. It feels good. Making that power for a long time. It's good. Man, 129, 130, 131, 129, 131. Yeah, that's what's going on. So the cooler's obviously the right size too, like it doesn't it, yeah. seem to suffer any heat soak. And yeah, even after we sat for five minutes, have a chat, to try and cool it down, you, you can't cool it down any more than the 35 degree inlet that it's got. Mm. It's picked up 50 kilowatts with, fi 55 it. kilowatts with eight pounds. Pretty good, yeah. about right, isn't it? I'd say that's probably bang on because it should be five and a half pounds to do the work of the, like, the, the, to make the extra power. Mm -hmm. And then there's two pounds to turn, put to, to make the supercharger, which is sapping energy. Yeah. So that all seems very fair. Yeah, if it was a turbo, you'd make that power on six pound. Yeah. Yep. But you're just using a little bit to make that power. Mm. I do really like this car. This I love the dash. This would be sick in a street car. Mum, a mate of mine's toying with buying a street car. And he's oh, like, yeah? oh. Should help him with the K series. No, no, he doesn't have budget. Uh, He's like, oh, I want a supercharger. I said, well, if I K series cheap, it's only 800 bucks. Yeah, that's the cheapest yeah. part of the whole yeah, deal. You just put it in, and then that's it. Yeah, then you got to add an engine no, management that's... system, a transmission. Why don't you start him with that? Do no, no, it all. 800 bucks, man. Done. No, because then I'll get married to it and do all the work for free. I'll be the free tuning shop guy, tiny yeah. battery terminals. <laughs> <laughs> if you put a K24 in one of these. You can bring it here with loose battery terminals and I'll tighten them for you. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Anytime. That actually would be a good swap. Um, man, this is with a... The, with the dual clutch box too. This is a really nice car. Like, it, I, I, you know, maybe not this exactly. Yeah, yeah, no back yeah seat, but the but, actual platform um, is a, such a good car. Yeah, I really think they are. Is there a suspension for this? Like, is there... Um, oh, everything. 
suspension well, and brakes to just slap yeah. in out of off the box, off the shelf aftermarket stuff, or is it off a better car? A, a uh, both. Car? So the company that does our blower kit yeah. adapt. Uh, I think their LS430 Brembo's oh, yeah. comes with like a billet bracket and all the bits. And the only problem is they're quite a tall caliper, so your wheel, like your wheel options, are fairly limited. Right. But yeah, there's tons of off-the-shelf stuff for these. Man, good seating position. Like it is, it's just mm. a very comfortable, cool. Yeah, considering car. you can fit in it fairly well with yeah. a sunroof. Even. Yeah, I'd drive this. I would like to drive this car like just daily. It. Yeah. And it's relatively safe. Like these had airbags and stuff in there. Yeah, these have got twin airbags. These have got airbags in the seat too with the stop yeah. ones. Like if you don't pull the seats out. And decent enough to, someone could actually sit in the back yeah. as well, which is very rare Put in a, a car kid like seat this. Seat in it too. Cruise around. Gearbox yeah. needs to go straight away. Sorry. No. The funny. Dual clutch, bro. The funny gearbox. I'm not not super keen. It's only the shifter. It's not the box. This is the same box as a BRZ. What now? Same gearbox. They're in everything, bro. Really? This six speed is in S15, RX8, RX, uh, sorry, RX8, MX5, NC, and ND, BRZ, um, like tons of stuff. It's literally just the Asian six speed that everything went in in a two liter Aspo car. Huh, how come they got the reverse upside down and back to front in this thing? BRZ the same, we're crossing up. How come BRZ got the reverse It must just be the, the way the guts of the box work. Huh. Oh, well, that was. Fairly simple. Yeah. Somewhat uneventful as far as things didn't break. Nothing caught on fire. So whenever that happens. <laughs> Including that block of timber. I was like <laughs> yeah. waiting for the timber burning smell. It's probably the most reliable car I've ever had. All things considered. The, the beatings that it's had. And I think it's just so underpowered factory. Yeah. That like, yeah, okay, how can you go wrong? Well, we've uh, had a pretty good result today all in all. Um, not quite the 150 kilowatts I'd previously predicted. We ended up with about 132 kilowatts at the wheels, but that's bang on what Scotty was predicting at that kind of 30% gain again. So um, massively stoked with it. What's your thoughts, Scotty? It, it's made a noticeable gain again. So when you overlay it from factory to what we had to what we've got now, that gain for the mods that have been done, I think it's worth it. And mm. the thing's gonna have heaps more grunt to drive. It's picked up nearly 100 newt meters at the wheels just about everywhere. Yeah. So the fuel change for the insurance is, is a good thing. A little bit more boost on this setup, it seems to like it. Yeah, we ended so, up with, what, eight and a half pounds? Yeah. I think we weren't quite sure we were gonna end up with on boost bills about eight and a half tapering to mid sevens. Yeah, yeah. Um, seems to like it and overall the power it's not as if it's the same in some spots and a bit higher and a bit lower mm. it, it's a good sort of 30 kilowatts higher literally just the curves moved everywhere up again. that's all it is it it looks like the engine just picked up displacement yeah now it's a two and a half liter aspo engine yeah yeah so good good gains yeah um, it tuned up really well with the new fuel setup with the return system as well mm. so Seemed all to of help it yeah, all of the E numbers and our injector sizes all make complete sense, telling me that it's not running out of fuel, that there's no funny stuff going on. Yeah, and we're also not cooking the fuel in the rail anymore because it's constantly cycling as opposed yeah. to just sitting there until it eats it. Yeah, for sure. Um, intake air temps were really good, so I don't know what inner cooling setup it's got. Yeah, it's um, just a, like a little bar and plate that Rank One supplied, mm -hmm. but they've obviously spent a lot of time on this kit to get it mm -hmm. correct for the car. Like, it works. Even as far as the fitment goes, it went on really nicely, but it's nice to see at the track, at the drags, and now on the dyno that it all works really well mm. together. Like it's not, there's no one piece that's fighting itself. Well, the intake temps, whether we stopped and let it cool down between runs or went and had lunch and came back or whatever, the intake temps always seemed the same at about yeah. 10 degrees higher than ambient, no matter what. So that tells me that it is sized perfectly, like really good. Yeah, and it's also equally not too big that you're inducing lag or mm. unnecessary intake volume. No, just perfect. So it should be, on the track you'll notice this again as, a, as another big improvement. I'm pretty excited and, and interestingly, we did um, a few dyno pulls right at the end there between um, like 100% throttle, mm. 75, 50. We did try 25, but it didn't yeah. have enough power to actually move yeah. the rollers. But yeah, yeah. interestingly, the 50% throttle run with the current setup was actually almost exactly the same power as it used to have NA. Yeah, it's pretty weird. So eh? it's interesting to see sort of where it's at as far as air consumption. Mm. So like obviously it's all working, but it's also interesting that 
that throttle body is obviously very well sized to this engine from the factory. Like Toyota got it right. They've spent a lot of time working it out. But we also didn't have to put a bigger throttle body on it. There was no reason or need to. No, and a lot of times you don't. The throttle, bo throttle body size is, is a funny thing, I suppose, where bigger is definitely not always better. It makes them drive worse and yeah. not always pick up more power. So yeah, the I've way seen, that, oh, sorry, go ahead. I've seen a lot of people want to jam like the 102 mil LS throttle bodies on their yeah. 300 kilowatt 2Js. Whereas you look at like something like the Cresta's got the factory FG throttle body, which mm. makes what, the 1200 horsepower, give or take as a rough number. And that's a 72 mil, 71, 72 mil throttle body. Yeah. And even like Dale's Commodore, which may, well, at the time was making over 2000 at the wheels, had a 102 mil LS throttle body on it. Mm. Like mm. they just don't need to be that big. Yeah. It's, um, Sacrificing, I don't think it's worth it to sacrifice yeah. the drivability. And when you put a pressure sensor before and after the throttle, and you can measure that so easily, if you've got a pressure difference there, absolutely time to change the throttle. But mm. until that point, leave it alone. You need to be making some decent power before it gets there for sure, but mm. worth, worth measuring. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll cool. see you next time.